Yeah, I, that's what you have to do. You have to have good materials from the from the beginning. Like in my two, no, I, I think I've now done four crowdfunding campaigns, three successfully, and um, it was always key to have a lot of materials beforehand to, to, to be able to show uh, something. One time I just had an idea that didn't work. Idea never uh, sells. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you're 100% right. What you want to show in this teaser, whether it's two minutes or 10 minutes, is a pain point, point. like somebody literally running away from their government and mm -hmm. somebody literally has lost all their money uh, in Iran or uh, uh, I remember, Hass, we were talking about um, Lebanon uh, in yeah. your house. You know what's going on there? Yeah, yeah, my sister's lost her money. She's leaving Lebanon tomorrow. That's a good example. Yeah. How do you envision humanity's future? With Bitcoin as the monetary root layer, how could the life of the average person look like or be transformed in a society or civilization based on Bitcoin? How can you imagine a hyper-Bitcoinized world and a monetary, economical, social, structural, scientific, technological, and ethical, spiritual level. What is your imagination, your dream, your vision, comprehension of a monetary evolution rooted in Bitcoin? What is freedom to you? These and many other questions and insights and enlightenment we talk about in our really fascinating conversation with Torsten Hoffman, a renowned prize winning award winning filmmaker of Cryptopia and other films and documentaries and Hass McCook, the, you know, well known uh, Bitcoin preacher, auto DCA preacher. So without further ado, this is my really fascinating, amazing talk. If you can contribute in any shape or form, if you have any questions, feedback, or you want to, you know, somehow cooperate with me, with other Bitcoiners, experts, filmmakers, producers, creative people in making this film a reality, giving the people a glimpse into the future where there is freedom, prosperity, and abundance within the monetary root layer rooted in Bitcoin. All right, welcome to the show. My name is Kevin Davani. Uh, my two special guests, really excited to have you guys on my show, Torsten Hoffmann, the filmmaker. Um, congratulations again, Torsten, to your movie, Cryptopia, uh, excellent movie. Um, and yeah, and we've got Hesme Cook, <laughs> uh, longtime friend and Bitcoiner. So Torsten, if I want to, I want to start off with you. Can you give like a short introduction? Like what was the intention, the vision behind your movie? Like. How did you get into this this whole you know Bitcoin space or or whatever you want to call it like crypto space? Cool. I'll try to keep it short. So um, in 2000, 2013, I discovered Bitcoin and it kind of connected with um, uh, like some papers I wrote during my MBA um, about alternative currency. So for me, I, I had a aha moment relatively um, quickly. And at that time, I was working with a lot of documentary filmmakers and I knew, oh, this is a topic I'm passionate about. Let's make my first documentary about the topic. That was Bitcoin, the end of money as we know it. Pretty low budget, um, but it went quite far. Um, I think we licensed it to 25, 30 different countries. Um, we just published it on, on YouTube, actually, and it, we got like 600,000 views in, in, in a month or so. So, I mean, it's still popular. It's um, it traveled quite widely. And um, Cryptopia film was kind of like a follow-up um, five years later. What has happened? Back then, it was only Bitcoin. Now, there's, you know, 100 other narratives. And back then, the whole digital gold narrative really didn't exist. Um, um, yeah, most of these other projects didn't exist. So um, I kind of um, came back and revisited the whole space. And um, you've seen Cryptopia. It's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty big, ambitious project, um, trying to cover pretty much everything that's going on in the industry. And um, somebody has recently told me that um, in my film, Bitcoin is kind of the, the hero because it, it is... Um, uh, you know, f first the star, then it gets attacked, and then, um, you know, it, it kind of has this um, resurgence, and, and there's um, um, guys battling against it, so you have the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and that is kind of like what I was going um, to, uh, to do. Um, I'm personally very much a Bitcoiner, but I'm, as a filmmaker, I'm trying to be less... Um, uh, less one-sided or I'm trying to keep an open mind about everything but I, I do think it comes becomes clear that a I'm passionate about the general technology and b that if I were to make a financial bet or advice a bitcoin is definitely the the, the most solid and I think that's probably um, your opinion as well great thanks so uh, has uh, 
would you maybe you want to start off because I mean, I, well, let me let me ask you one more question towards. I mean, do you have like for now like a bigger picture, like a bigger vision for yourself? What do you want to communicate? Um, um, like why why are we why are we doing Bitcoin? What what is it what is it in? What's in for humanity? I mean, what's the benefit? What's the value? What is I mean, is is has you have you have you ever like encountered like uh, situations where people ask you? Why Bitcoin? I mean, you know, my life is pretty good, you know, especially, you know, yeah. at least in the Western world. What what would change? I mean, how could how would my daily life change in the future? Uh, are people going to ask you that or do do people ask you that? Yeah, I, I get that question all the time. And I'm sure you, you've um, um, analyzed this much more deeply than I have. But look, I think um, it, a lot of the answers really fall under the category of freedom, right? Bitcoin provides freedom, whether it's um, uh, someone who doesn't have access to financial services in developing countries, whether it's um, uh, cross-border uh, transfers, whether it's um, freedom of speech even. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that fall under this, um, but I'm sure um, you probably have a bigger framework and much more that, that goes under it. But um, I think freedom is definitely a, a big one. Yeah. So, you know, the, the thing is, I mean, I've, I've been in the, you know, in the Bitcoin space, if you want, you know, doing all these interviews, podcasts and reading a lot and, you know, uh, uh, communicating with so many Bitcoiners. It just has become so somehow overloaded with um, it's, it's somehow become hyper intellectualized. It just, you know, it's a lot of knowledge, of course, it's a lot of multifaceted Bitcoin. You need to understand a lot of things. But at the end of the day, like. Uh, you know, especially if you just look around what the situation looks like globally, you know, macroeconomically, geopolitically, the lockdown, the political propaganda, uh, now with or without scientific fraud that's going on, we don't just don't know. But I'm just, I'm just curious, how can we uh, as, as Bitcoiners or individuals or collectively maybe as a community translate this bigger vision, this uh, like, how how would how would the lives change? Because I've been talking, you know, to Jeff Booth, to Titus Gable of Free Private Cities, and it's and and after I read their books and talked to them, I got this enlightenment, this this bigger vision. Like, wow, you know, it is possible. It's not it's not utopian. It's not a sci-fi thing. It's not it's not dystopian uh, for sure. But if we just put all the right people together and we have Bitcoin, I mean, the hardest and scarcest money ever created. I mean, it's unfathomable, right? It's absolutely scarce. It's decentralized. It has all the monetary properties. And if we like connect that with free private cities, so what are you going to call it? Like citadel cities or miniaturized human civilizations. And you put in like entrepreneurs, investors, uh, inventors, uh, engineers with, you know, uh, on a monetary root layer of Bitcoin, and you build like a beautiful structure of deflationary economics, like Jeff Booth has already been talking about so much, because it makes really logical sense. Like, how will our lives change? How could it? How could? Because I think not only our generation, my generation, but also our you know previous generation, like our parents and grandparents, don't really know what it's like to be in a well to be just put it bluntly, you know, we can't even imagine what it what it live what it feels like to be in a non slave-like civilization. I mean, with, you know, with the central banks, the, the governments, the, you know, all the oppression going on a little bit more subtle over here, but a little bit more oppressive in Iran, Venezuela, Turkey, Iran, wherever, you know. So I think it's realistic to show a personal or, or different personal stories of people, what the daily life of people can look like in a deflation economics rooted in Bitcoin with super like, uh, you know, exponential technological innovation, because that's what technology is about. Whether you talk about infrastructure, transportation, energy production, energy efficiency, e environmental technologies, uh, maybe even, you know, peaceful defensive uh, technologies so that people can at least, you know, defend their, because that's the role actually of government to protect life, liberty, health, and property. Okay, now I've, <laughs> I think I talked too much, but has what? What is your take? Can you maybe elaborate on my thoughts along those lines? What I'm trying to convey to Torsten? I think Torsten gets it, but you know, make from your perspective. So uh, uh, basically, how how uh, I understood that is like uh, you'd uh, effectively uh, like to uh, show people uh, potential different scenes 
uh, of uh, uh, of the future. Uh, different, uh, uh, basically, what life will look like in a uh, in a uh, uh, couple of hyper Bitcoinization uh, scenarios. Uh, whether that's in uh, free private cities or, or living amongst the, 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 the you know, uh, the state, the state changing uh, forms and, and changing shape, uh, uh, effectively uh, uh, trying to trigger that uh, moment of, uh, uh, of belief into the person first uh, learning uh, about Bitcoin. So, uh, I suppose what I mean, uh, I think, you know, Torsten might have alluded to it uh, a little. It's, uh, it's that sense of like, a, you know, a, a belief in your, in your right to freedom, which gives most people their, uh, you know, uh, aha uh, Bitcoin uh, moment. And uh, basically what you're trying to show or to understand how it's possible to show and communicate uh, through film, how having and holding, you know, those you know, beliefs about freedom can lead into uh, 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 a fruitful and happy post uh, hyper Bitcoinization uh, world. Can, can you maybe, I, I think Hesse would be very useful um, to kind of summarize your whole thing about, um, you know, Bitcoin as a religion or as a movement. Um, religion is always a, a, a tricky word because I think that's where it starts, right? It starts with the with the ideas and the the hardcore followers, and then everything else comes after that. So maybe it will, will actually make sense for you to just kind of summarize uh, you, your work or your thinking on, on that before uh, moving on, maybe. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's uh, the 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 transition from uh, uh, belief in Bitcoin's principles and a Bitcoin world and how it looks once it's fully materialized. So, uh, yeah, Bitcoin's going to be a million dollars a Bitcoin. What's the world going to look like when it's 1 million a Bitcoin and how does it affect my life on a, on a day to day? Uh, uh, and I, I suppose that all depends on, uh, uh, Yeah, see, so this is this is the picture we wanna we wanna like you wanna communicate to people. You know, here's life at you know one million dollars a Bitcoin. It means there's been something drastic that's changed in the economy, and now Bitcoin is a uh, is a reserve. Uh, uh, I I uh, I not knowing how to describe you know how how to open the door to this photo. How do I introduce somebody to this? Uh, 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 to this picture, mm. it's, it's sort of from from a from a, uh, from purely purely like a, a a cinematic point of view, like the scene I want to show people is this is how, you know, the world looks now, and this is how how life is. Uh, what's the scene that's shown before that scene? For me, it's something probably like a crazy and religious, <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll, I'll pass you on. You believe these things. You believe in Bitcoin. Heaven awaits. Here's what heaven looks like. I actually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by this this notion of having like this hardcore fundamentalist uh, group yeah. of, of, of yeah. Bitcoiners. And I guess both of you are a part of that, that, that tribe, right? Uh, because I mean, that is um, with, without this group defending the network, right? Um, 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 it, it won't work. So I, I, I think, I think uh, like this intellectual, spiritual um, core is super, super important to the story and, and to the technology, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, there's lots of things you can, uh, you can play on several elements of that core, how big it is, how it doesn't actually need to be that big, uh, uh, to, to change the world. Uh, like you only need really like a million hardcore people, yeah. 5 million, maybe like really hardcore Bitcoiners. And like, uh, you'll have, you'll have hyper Bitcoinization. No, no problems. Yeah. And 
you know, uh, if I may say, um, Torsten, you know, I want to get what my wish is to, you know, we get out of this self adulation of, you know, hyper intellectualized Bitcoin educate people are too busy for that. You know, I, I really, I really, my desire is to reach whatever the 90, 95, 99% of humanity with, with at least with my vision, with this film ID I have, and I can't do it by myself. That's why, you know, I want to talk to you. I talked also to some other filmmakers who would be actually interested in talking to you. He's another German filmmaker. So I see this really as a joint venture project and, you know, believe him, you know, here and there. But for me, it's like, this is about not only ethos, but it's about the reality, what we can achieve. What are we trying to achieve here with Bitcoin? I mean, we cannot, we cannot eat Bitcoin. B people are too busy. They got lives, they got children, they got jobs. They're too distracted. They're too entrenched into, you know, brainwashed with this whole mainstream uh, media. And uh, we, they want solutions. People want things, you know, just get it done, right? So that's why I wrote this article and it's a short, really brainstormed article, which mm. I, I sent you all, you know, human life rooted in Bitcoin. And because, you know, I'm becoming father at the, uh, around December. So I thought, you know, it, it really touches me because also like Jeff Booth, he, he actually wrote this book for his children. So I'm like, you know, these are the questions I usually ask and I'm still asking people, like, how do you envision humanity's future with Bitcoin as a monetary root layer? How do you, you know, what, what's the life of the average person going to look like? So anyway, so, um, so, I, I see like a transformational shift, a, a really a, an evolutionary shift on every level you can think of, structurally, socially, monetarily, definitely, economically. You know, what if people like you see people day to day, like as a personal story, they pay less and less like, oh, I was paying that much. Why am I paying less now, you know, the next day or whatever, the year after for a product or service that is even much better, much more innovative. You know, this is what it's about, you know. How is look, look, housing going to look like? A problem you're gonna you're gonna run into, and this is I think what I want to ask Torsten, is like a scope creep, because it is very interesting. What's housing going to look like? Uh, what what can you fit? Like I don't remember Cryptopia having that many scenes. Like, and you couldn't have really packed anything more in to an hour than what you already did. Yeah. Well. Um, uh, okay. So. So let's. Um, let's maybe start somewhere else. Um, um, start from the the filmmaking process or how how to think about this kind of a, a film idea, right? So I've I've been producing documentaries for eight years now. Um, lots of credits to my name. Lo uh, loads of um, documentaries, but I know filmmakers uh, all over the world. I've done business with pretty much all the big uh, broadcasters, starting from NetGeo and Discovery and CCTV in, in China, which is like 800, 800 million TV households, um, to Netflix and Samsung and, and um, uh, you know, Amazon and all these, these kind of people. So, um, the first step is always okay. Who who do you try to reach, right? I mean, you, there there are documentaries that literally the the core the, the target audience is one person. Uh, that's one one example is is that um, documentary about uh, documentary about rape in the U.S. military. That filmmaker just wanted to reach that one decision maker at the Pentagon uh, to kind of get the word out, and then you know some policy changes, right? Or or it's the, the um, Al Gore's climate change uh, movie, um, forget uh, Inconvenient Truth, which is basically spreading uh, a message to millions of people, right? And and anything in between. And I'm I, I'm recently um, I've I've learned a lot and read a lot of books and podcasts and stuff about really finding your niche audience and really serving them a product and that's which you can then monetize as a filmmaker right and i, I think you your approach might be slightly different um you might want to have a broader um uh, appeal maybe then the broadcast way is still the best way to do it i can i can help with that or it's it's kind of like a free youtube kind of model where you just want to try uh, try to reach everyone so so maybe maybe before um uh, talking too much about the story or about the vision tell us a bit more about what you're trying to accomplish with this film where who's going to see it and and you know how it's going to look like because it might be a, a, a movie documentary like a feature documentary for cinemas like mine it might be a tv series right um, five times 52 minutes it might be a youtube series visit which is 20 times 10 minutes or something right so there's so many ways to do this um uh, maybe start with the formatting and the the the, the audience first rather than than your vision right you see, I, when I sent uh, this article and, you know, I talked about um, 
this this idea to to a bunch of um, to a good friend of mine. Uh, he's in Iran. He's a actual pr prominent Bitcoiner, and uh, he, he's, he he forwarded to other Iranians. And the, the thing is, I mean, it's, you know, I talked about Iran previously. I said the, the the pain point, you know, the suffering, you know, the social, economical, you know, the whole oppressive regime. It's it, that's the cause, right? So people, they, they gave me a lot of positive feedback. They thought it's a great idea. Why? Because they already feel the pain point. They are desperate. They're just hungry for, you know, a change, uh, you know, prosperity, abundance, for real freedom. So I think it, it is already in the process of, of developing this kind of pain points in the Western world or in Europe, in European Union or wherever, in America and Australia. So people are already feeling there is something coming. So I think it's due time it's overdue i think it's a perfect timing for people to to get you know exposed to this kind of vision because they they somehow it's lurking it's somehow hiding uh maybe it's it hasn't been articulated yet but people like fear there's a subtle fear you know inside them like what is going to happen you know uh is the euro going to crash? Like, uh, what's going to happen to the, you know, insolvencies? You know, the a lot of banks and Deutsche Bank is insolvent. What's going to happen, you know, to to our lives? So, I, I, it could be anybody. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know who the specific target is. That what you're talking about? Like the specific target audience, like ethnographic or de demographics, age, age, age-wise. Is mm -hmm. that what you're talking about? Like to be part of it, yeah. Free? I wouldn't know to be. I think it's. It could be anybody with with concerns, like what is going to happen to our future, whether they have children or not, whether it's you know middle class, lower class, upper middle class. But don't we all want like a more prosperous, abundant future? You know, where, where also Jeff Booth talk about it. His subtitle is actually why deflation is the key to an abundant future. So we can create, you know, with this monetary root layer, which is called Bitcoin which cannot be confiscated, which cannot be stopped. It's already too late. The cat is out of the bag. Pandora's box been opened like 12 years ago. It's over. The game is over. So all we have to do is like get together and structure it, put it into a structure. Like whether you call it like Citadel City, Free Private City, a project with its one, two, three, like Titus Gable project in Honduras, or there could be like thousands of projects like that. Like Look, I, I think it's a... Uh... Like I have seen a lot of like uh, Bitcoin and crypto like documentaries by now. I do think it is a unique concept in terms of a Bitcoin story. What might a Bitcoin future look like? It's a, uh, it's like a, it's a, it's the the only like uh, the only thing, uh, uh, and it's not really only thing wrong with it when you when you present such a statement. Uh, you have to illustrate how we're going to get there. Okay. Like so, there has um, to be an illustration. Here's your pain point. Here's what it could be like in the future. And like, this is how uh, Bitcoin does it without needing to tell you about elliptical curve algorithms or anything <laughs> like that. It's just, right. here's how like, you know, if you need to run away, flee from an oppressive government to a free city, this is how Bitcoin's going to work for you. Like in that situation. Right. Uh, parallel like societies you know i mean this this is my in my naive understanding like you know what is it life like now you know people are like chasing money they have to work for 50 hours a week just to make ends meet you know it's 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 i think it's unimaginable for people we can we can have that kind of reality but it just we, we, we don't know. We we never we never had. I mean, maybe people in the, during the gold standard, you know, they were still able to save money. You know, to to have a low time preference to invest into the future, to create into the future. Whether it be artists or or a merchant, you know, like I want to show like what is life right now here and what realistically life could like maybe mm. maybe peril. You know? So, 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 um, okay, a little bit of uh, inside baseball here. So, um, I, I was um, offered, or I was approached by someone who who runs one of these um, projects. You know, like a like a Bitcoin run country or, or, or city, and there's many, right? Uh, some some have already failed, some will fail, obviously. And and the the, the idea was basically they said, well, look, we have a one million dollar uh, marketing budget. What what can we do? And so um, my, my film partner and I, we came up with basically two, two concepts. Um, one concept is just basically looking at all these kind of independent um, nations, right? There's, there's one in Australia, by the way, in, in Western Australia. Yeah, yeah. It's like a co country by itself, right? There's a, there's a funny story it's about a, that. It's, it's gone. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, out, of business, out of business, bankrupt on the Rona. 
<laughs> no <laughs> tourists. Right. Or they've, uh, right. yeah. Yeah, they right. sell passports. That's how they make their money. Yeah, great place. So, so, so you could you could basically um, look at twenty of these places, right? And a lot of them are, are failing. And um, you, you, even the, the what's the one called in Seattle now, where the first murders are happening, right? Yeah, yeah, the there's Chaz. a lot of these there's yeah. a lot of these these projects, and many many of them fail. And you could you could kind of create a narrative where um, look, a lot of these people are uh, utopian, uh, blue eyed, um, and naive. Um, um, uh, dreamers that can't run and, and build a city, but but um, there's one or two projects. These guys think about it f f from the ground up. This is interesting, right? You, you, it's like a documentary about this whole concept. Another story arc could be that um, we watch the building of it. It's basically almost like embedded journalism, right? So we start with you having podcasts, right? And and five years later, um, you actually you know whatever uh, it's, it's it's a big process right you meet heads of state you you meet uh, um, people online first then it's uh, then you, there's a conference and then people get around and then there's some some culture that develops with some i don't know songs or um, the books or like like a like a declaration of independence or whatever it is so it's a whole process that will take five years but the shooting days is just like two or three shooting days in each of these five years. But at the end, you have basically a creation story, which is super, super interesting, right? And um, I mean, that's just two of the ideas that we came up uh, back back in the day. We could do a we could do a, a, a thirty year project. <laughs> that's a little. I don't have the patience. For we that. all uh, yeah. turn grayer and grayer. The beards. Hey, it'll be, yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be good. It'd be a world first. <laughs> Or maybe yeah, not, actually, who knows? Yeah, but as a long-term project, why not? Yeah, yeah, and we could just document it as a raw material at least, and then just, you know, wouldn't that be possible and then put it together? It's gonna to be loads of materials by then, but. Yeah. <laughs> but but look, in terms of like practicalities and uh, and all of that, like uh, what, uh, uh, you know, what pushes you to go for a, you know, particular format? So like, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure like uh, Bitcoin, you could do, uh, uh, you know, as many episodes, a series as long as the bold and the beautiful and, you know, not run out of episodes. Uh, you know, what's what's the practicality of, you know, selling a, a five five episode series, you know, versus, you know, a single block documentary? Yeah. I imagine it's a very different process. Yeah, depends on the buyer. I mean, that, that was kind of my, my first question, right? So if, if the job is to sell it, right, to license it to Netflix or to um, uh, many of these uh, streaming services or TV channels, then you need the packaging, right? You need five times 45 minutes or three times 52 or, or, or whatnot. What, what but maybe that's not the approach. Maybe the approach for you is basically having it on, on, on YouTube, packaging it for YouTube, um, so you reach a 10 times larger uh, audience. That, that's kind of what, what I wanted to understand first, but it, it doesn't seem to me that you have that clear of a, uh, of a of a plan yet, um, but I think you need to consider it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So you, uh, Torsten, you 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 have uh, more or less like crowdfunded the the last project, right? I mean, to yeah, a little. Um, I mean, crowdfunding was was almost like the last uh, piece of the puzzle. So we um, uh, we approached Screen Australia. Screen Australia is a film commission, film Förderung, um in, in Australia, and they funded maybe forty percent of the budget because I had already proven that there's an audience with my first film. So that that, that was okay. that. And then based on the Screen Australia funding, I could then go to a German public broadcaster. Norddeutsche Rundfunk and say, look, we have half of the funding. Why don't you uh, add uh, for, for the German broadcasting oh, rights? You add another forty percent, right? Okay. And then, and mm -hmm. then the crowdfunding. So it's it's usually uh, building blocks like okay. that. Did you start off with a? I mean, this is what I had envisioned. I thought that would be a practical approach, like do a like a really effective, really sexy, touching, emotionally touching, rationally touching. Uh, a comprehensible uh, somehow teaser trailer like five minutes ten minutes whatever but like it really touches people in the hearts in the brains they really like are really hungry like what's going to happen next like like a soap opera you know but but it's a reality like like we show we we whether it be interviews or you know or we go to honduras and talk to titus gable right there at you know on his project and his running project and then sell it somehow or you know have the followership and uh, the viewers and somehow build up a community and then, you know, eventually have it at least partially or to a substantial degree crowdfunded. Is that realistic? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, that's what you have to do. You have to have good materials from the from the beginning. Like in my two, no, I, I think I've now done four crowdfunding campaigns, three successfully. And um, it was always key to have a lot of 
materials beforehand to, to, to be able to show uh, something. One time I just had an idea that didn't work. Idea never uh, sells. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you're 100% right. What you want to show in this teaser, whether it's two minutes or 10 minutes, is a pain point, point. like somebody literally running away from their government and mm -hmm. somebody literally has lost all their money uh, in Iran or uh, uh, I remember, Hass, we were talking about um, Lebanon in yeah. your house. You know what's going on there? Yeah, yeah, my sister's lost her money. She's leaving Lebanon tomorrow. That's a good example. Yeah, that would yeah. be a Thank prime God. example. Leaving, Lebanon leaving is like tomorrow. the current perfect example for that. You know, yeah. but then, you know, show the opposite world. That That's what I'm saying. You know, I want to show Lebanon or people like really like Zia, one of my friends in Iran. And like show them what life could be like in, you know, in such a free private cities where you have, you know, the protection actually, you know, uh, 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 some are provided and and done by by private contractual partners. That it's a serv it's a service provider. So they yeah. actually uh, much more efficiently and even cheaper they <laughs> and better they provide all the services. Right, security, protection of whatever, health, medicine, yeah. whatever that is. You know, uh, pr a protection of property, and. But then everything else we have like true free market principle because people don't even know what capitalism and most people don't know. We don't have capitalism. It's this is not yeah, free that's market a, that's, that's a that's another like a battle, unfortunately, and that muddies the waters a lot for Bitcoin because like Bitcoin has offers the promise of capitalism and people hear that and they say capitalism. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want that. Yeah. No, I, I think we, we philosophically uh, clear agree, uh, the three of us are on this 100%. Um, maybe, but for, for the trailer or for the storyline, make sure to um, also have um, the the voice that uh, calls everything in question, right? You, you want the, the the communist or the socialist to say, look, these guys are crazy, these libertarians, they think they can run themselves. No, we need the state. You know, we, we need someone to call you crazy or, or, to, or to call the whole idea crazy. You need that tension in, in the trailer. And that's, that's maybe the, the, the one storytelling advice that you should definitely um, um, go away with, that um, a fanboy film speaks to the fanboys, but mm -hmm. those you've already convinced, right? Exactly. They moved to the Citadel yes. anyway. Yeah. Um, so you, want, you want to reach, uh, um, a, a large audience yeah. right and interviewing yeah. like would that be important too like key figures at least from different fields would it be you know entrepreneurs economics uh you know investors i don't care you know like from every sector and you know playing field like give the, like have them give their personal story or perspective on what the world could look like. This is really important to me. Like everybody should, you know, give their input. Like what is, what do you envision? You know, how is life going to look like in 10, 20 years? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a look, there's a little bit of like, uh, uh, obviously like screenwriting and timing to be done to figure out what goes in, uh, and out, uh, 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 but, but I think, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, uh, feasible enough, uh, to like, uh, you know, achieve, achieve something, uh, achieve something good. Like I'm sure, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot more difficult than it sounds though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Torsten's nodding his head. Yeah. <laughs> I could just uh, just go back to um, our Kickstarter campaign. Um, actually, all of them, even uh, five years ago, um, uh, what trailer we presented, um, the the last Kickstarter campaign for Cryptopia, and now the the trailer that we used to sell it. Um, so we're launching on Amazon in a couple of days' time in eighty countries. And, and, and you and guys, you, uh, you guys had the goodies as well. You guys had the best goodies for the for the you know the backers <laughs> yeah yeah that's true i mean that's actually a good point right why would they support you they they want to have something uh, uh, physically if possible um yeah and in in those trailers you need a little bit of drama a little, a little bit of um, um script writing for sure uh, and and yeah paint that picture um look happy happy to um I don't know, support or talk to your other filmmaker uh, colleagues. Uh, maybe I can, I mean, I, I've been not only a producer, I've been also a sales agent with, with documentaries. So I, I know the marketplace quite well, especially mm -hmm. in Germany. I actually, I sold uh, 250,000 Blu-rays back in the days. So I had a wow. Blu-ray and DVD label here and I, I know all the TV channels and, and stuff like that. So I'm happy to help. If it's not on the creative side, then maybe on, on, on that side of, of things. Um, look, I'm, I'm passionate about this too. And maybe maybe there's a, there's a film project or, or a series coming out of it. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, if we could just, you know, whatever, you know, somehow connect and, and cooperate with one another and make this really, uh, 
yeah make this make this a reality because i think it's 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 the perfect timing for for you know communicating the bigger picture for people because they're i think people are lost you know they they don't know really what it is what you know it's just so much disinfo misinformation disinformation going on and people are confused so maybe you know it's the perfect timing for you know at least give them a feeling of what what it could what life could could look like yeah, in the future yeah. so torsten um any other like uh, before we wrap up like do you have any other uh, projects plans or 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 uh, uh that you can talk about like for the future or yeah, um, where can people well, find you? yeah i mean funding new films is always tricky um i'm still in the in the distribution uh, mode for cryptopia so we just started with a tv sales agent um we're launching on um, 80 or 90 countries in on amazon and amazon prime in some countries as well um lots of other video platforms so that's that's gonna you know continue for the next couple of months i'm i'm hoping to do another one on the next technology but i mean funding is always tricky hopefully bit okay. by bit you know my reputation and, and we've now won a couple of awards as well and yeah. many film festivals so so it gets uh, you know it, it takes a long time six years now hopefully my next one gets gets um, funded a little bit faster it's um, not easy um, being a filmmaker but um, for you maybe uh, to take away there's a couple of interesting ones so there's one BBC documentary um, was it BBC about the Puerto Rico uh, you know crypto island or whatever they call it mm -hmm. um, that might be a, an interesting case study although maybe maybe not so much uh but anyway maybe you can exchange a few emails so I've, I've obviously watched all the all the documentaries i liked some of them didn't like some others but there's there's different approaches and, and i think what feedback from the audience for my films have been well they felt like i'm not a tourist filmmaker i'm part of the community and i'm passionate about it and, and you are too and that makes a difference right a random bbc crew or netflix crew trying to cover a subject will never really do that well of a job so i think mm -hmm. part of your pitch is really look we we are behind it right we're passionate about it right. or you hire independent journalists right to, to cover you uh, neutrally i mean that, that might be a different approach then mm -hmm. okay well has do you have any final mm -hmm. thoughts no, no so uh, I always, I always love talking film storytelling, and you know, like uh, uh, selling, selling the belief. Everybody knows me as a religion man. I'll, uh, I'm not going to change. And the auto DC uh, preacher, yeah. Yeah, I've just got to now convert, uh, convert the masses to, to this, uh, to this beautiful belief system that we have. That you know, we have the rights to our, uh, to our properties, our speech, our movement, and. Uh, uh, and, and, and by the way, everyone's got to believe in something. Might as well believe in that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, exactly. And by the way, uh, maybe one more comment. So you need these strong characters, right? Likable mm -hmm. or hateable characters, and and ones with extreme views. And 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 that's the perfect example, right? The, yeah. the really, uh, <laughs> Bitcoin scholar. That's perfect. I mean, it's just, it's just picture perfect. And you need a few others. You need uh, enemies as well, right? Uh, what I mentioned before. Um, but but the more interesting uh, people are, the, the better. I, I see a lot of these, uh, especially YouTube documentaries. They do interviews with you know tons of these ICO people and black yeah. blockchain people and the suit and ties and suit people. And they all kind of have the same story and they want to picture the project no, who's going to watch this right you, you need you, you need a, a different approach yeah, yeah. Really you need the believers about. the exactly. ragtag bunch yeah. yeah no you really need the people who trust who understand it and who who you know who who, who just know that because you know the, the question at the end of the day is like do we have a choice i mean other than bitcoin that, i think that's the question you know in in order to to create a new uh, whatever human civilization or a more prosperous abundant world you know do we have that choice that that's that's a good question how is it going to look like so anyway so i really enjoyed the talk that torsten has and hope to you know uh we can repeat this in the very near future yeah continue all the best cheers absolutely bye -bye. take care guys bye-bye bye. take care so how did you like this talk with torsten hoffman and has mccook so if you are in the film industry, in the film business, a creative, you, are, you do music, uh, graphics, art, whatever you do, whatever experience you have, and you really not only believe but trust in the essence and power and potential and future of Bitcoin, and you have a vision, a concrete vision, then help me, help all of us. Help you know, yourself, your loved, your beloved ones, your family, your, the whole total humanity. So get in touch with me, my DMs are open on Twitter 
or wherever, make sure you follow Hesme Cook and Torsten Hoffman. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com or kd at kvandavani.com. My name is Kevan Davani. I'm the Total Connector. Let's make this film reality for total humanity. Thank you.